demonstrate the correct on guard position. The assault drill or the shooting while moving is an evolution that adds another layer of complexity to the, the standard sort of static hip shooting because you're moving and getting that rhythm to have one round with a follow-up shot on the same target like that is half again as difficult as simply trying to hit the target from the hip. Uh, extremely fun exercise and I'm sure we could burn between the two of us countless rounds practicing and once we got good at the static, get good at the moving, get good at the running, and I don't know, the jumping and leaping, man. That said, uh, this was the approved technique for close quarter shooting. Okay, so that's all well and good, and Rob said sort of most of what there is to say. I think. In, in reality, it probably wasn't that effective. Um, scare people, it would give you an advantage. It's better than just nothing, just running in with a bayonet and potentially letting the other guy get a shot in. But surely, surely they, we could do better than this. I think we probably could. And as a matter of fact, come 1944, there was a better technique. So, we have here on the uh, out of uh, period electronic device, we have a particular method, which is actually the only example that we've yet found of the middle finger technique in any way shape or form sorry it's the earliest example of the middle finger technique we found anywhere so we have in detail of the method rifle the alert position when there is a likelihood of meeting the enemy suddenly e.g town village or wood fighting come to the alert position relax the body to a position similar to that of a boxer sparring Bring the butt of the rifle into the shoulder, left hand gripping the handguard with the fingers well round the rifle. Costa, you weren't there first. Rest the left elbow against the body in a comfortable position about the left groin. Whoever wrote this probably wasn't wearing a pair of Brengo mags. Right hand. First finger and thumb locked on the bolt lever. Second finger on a trigger. So again, IPSC people will be having kittens that uh, you're walking around with the middle finger on the trigger. Keep the head up, chin clear of the butt so that the head can turn freely in any direction and all round observation is not hampered. Firing. When an enemy appears, keeping both, in capital letters, eyes open, throw the rifle up to what seems to be the right alignment and, without lowering the chin to the butt or attempting to aim more accurately, fire instantaneously. If the enemy is beyond the maximum range, the head must be lowered to the butt and a very quick aim with the sights taken. The trigger must be pulled straight through both pressures with the second finger, the first finger and thumb remaining locked on the bolt lever. Reload instantly and fire again, and so on as may be necessary. When firing, move sideways as described above. It must be rem remembered that the first shot must and can be away within half a second and subsequent shots as required at the high speed of, of which the fire is capable. This is pretty advanced compared to... You know, compared to this, the, the hip shooting that we just practiced, which is... Uh, it sounds... Even practicing it was very ad hoc. Yeah. So that the... Uh, with a vacuum of perhaps better information, that was the best idea around. Yeah. But this is... Uh, you know, having the butt in the shoulder, uh, before we even practice it, you can already tell it's going to be more effective. Despite the fact that you're not using the sights, you are looking down the barrel of the rifle mm -hmm. as opposed to over the barrel of the rifle. And that in itself is going to, in my view, be a uh, exponentially, or make it exponentially more effective. And from my perspective, I found cycling the, the action from the hip not natural. I found it, it's, you're sort of tucked up, the rifle's sort of, your ammo pouch is getting in the way and it wasn't really natural to cycle the bolt in that. I mean, I managed it, but it wasn't quite as used to what I'm doing with it in the shoulder. No, I would agree that uh, having it up in front of your face like that, or at least in front of your shoulders, it's this action here, which is akin to shooting in any position. Yeah. Whereas when it's down here, as we practice with the SMLE, it's this backward thing across your hip 
Yeah. That is not the natural way. The, the, the rifle wants to move back and forth. Yeah. If it was an up and down motion, it would be much better, but yeah. it's not. It's only half that, of course. Yeah. So having it up here already, I can, you can just, by holding it in that rear, yeah. you can tell that it's going to be a more effective way to engage mm. a close quarters target, and, I think, anyway. And it's a movement, but by this point, any soldier will have practiced enough to be comfortable with moving the bolt yeah. up in front of his face like that. Now, the next thing is that it doesn't just end there. There's notes, there's degree of accuracy. Up to 15 yards, a man with but a little training should get two to three hits in five rounds at a head and shoulders target when firing at his best possible speed. With practice, four to five hits become possible. There's another note, which is that the rifle must be held firmly into the shoulder with the left hand, otherwise it's gonna hurt. And uh, like so, eh? Yeah. That's what's gonna control it. This is simply gonna work the action and shoot. Yep. And, and with your the, control's gonna be with your left hand. With, with, bit like with the middle finger Mad Minute, you have less control over the rifle and all the control comes from the left hand, yes, yep. which is inherent here. Um, also says that owing to the recoil of the rifle, it will be found that this method of reloading is easier with live ammunition than with an empty rifle. Because the, the recoil sort of helps you and but we'll, uh, we'll see. For sure. Um, and then the following three points of elementary training are of particular importance. A, keep the magazine fully or nearly fully charged, because I suspect that you can burn the ammo pretty quick. Yep. Keep the bolt slightly oil for easy operation, obvious. Take care to ensure that all ammunition carried works freely in the charger clips, which is the usual thing that when they were issued ammunition at the first opportunity, they were to check that there were no dodgy charger clips. And uh, this method of handling the rifle will not be taught to recruits until they have been thoroughly grounded in basic weapons training. That's a bit of a no-brainer there. Yeah, this is a seriously advanced and technique. Perhaps in the, in the modern context, this looks a little archaic. Yeah. But uh, especially when you're talking about actually not using the sights, and in, in a modern context, that's something that's not done. You always use your sights. Yeah. But given the context of the time, you're absolutely right. Mm. That when we look at the hip shooting or just conventional shooting in general, this is something that is obviously born of experience so far in the war. Mm. And it's been enshrined in a training pamphlet now yeah. so that that information, this technique, is going to be promulgated throughout the army. Yep. And you know, 1944, we're talking about the meat and potatoes fighting mm -hmm. uh, for the Western Allies Yep. in France and, uh, and Germany, right? So mm -hmm. this is the technique that would most assuredly have gone into France and on through the rest of the war. Mm -hmm. And this is something I've touched on in an earlier video. This is, this is, this is the forgotten engagement range between actually proper aim shooting and bayonets. And Absolutely. This is this is really interesting the way that this is developed, and we're 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 so lucky that the uh, Vickers machine gun uh, website has found and archived all these. Uh, Make a donation. Yes, um, they found and archived these for 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 us to go through. And uh, little little aside, when we discovered these, I was working through them in um, uh, in chronological order, and. Uh, Rob was awake at the same time, and we were both on Facebook, and someone said, Rob, you got to look at this! And did a screenshot of, of the hip shooting, and then later, I, it's, it's middle fingering! And it's all there! And <laughs> it, was, it was, like, uh, amazing. And not aware of any other army teaching anything, nope. anything similar. I mean, with the Americans with the semi-auto, it was the semi-auto. You don't need to worry about this kind of thing. Um, and the Germans... <laughs> Are we really going to go there right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're going to set up a head and shoulders target at uh, uh, about 15 yards, so the maximum range mentioned there. Yeah. And uh, just, I think we'll do a few rounds static again and then, sure. and then a few rounds on the advance. I think we give the same treatment that we did, a couple of single round engagements, a couple of yep. double uh, round engagements, and yep. we'll see uh, how we do. With the much smaller target.
Okay, so I've got three clean hits on the actual figure. One, two, three. One clean hit down there and quite a lot of splash right in front that in reality would be, uh, would, would be uh, effective. And it certainly splashed a lot of cack up uh, in this gentleman's face here. Um, it's a lot more natural. Uh, the, the, it's, um, yeah, it, 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 it's building on skills you've got from normal shooting rather than from, from sort of bayonet fighting. Um, and I think with a little bit of practice, that's my first ever go at trying this. Uh, once Rob's had a go, we'll try, we'll try a sort of walk down with more rounds, a couple of exposures, something like that. Um, and we'll see what happens. And that was without using sights. I was looking over the top of, of the rifle, making sure, as, as in the instructions, not to bring my chin right down. Um, but I think that proves the, 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 the concept. And that's far more effective right there on a far smaller target than uh, the hip shooting of before that was on the full, the full body target. So uh, let's let Rob have a go. So much like my practice from before with the hip shooting, I uh, tended to shoot a little low as the footage you saw, a lot of splash right in front of the target, which you know left a, a lot of small fragments into the target. Uh, discounting those, there seems to be one, two, three, four uh, reasonable hits with two big, uh, correction, three big impacts uh, of uh, sizable degree bullet fragments and that, or stones or something like that. Of course, those wouldn't count in any kind of range setting, but uh, I dare say that those would have been just as effective as the bullets that hit the target. So what do you make of that? Well, I mean, that's, it's, it's entirely plausible. It's far, I mean, far more natural than the hip, uh, Absolutely. Than the hip yep. shooting and for follow-up shots and, and everything. Now, there's one thing that we, that we read out of the, uh, the memorandum over there that we haven't tried yet, which is at slightly longer ranges, actually bringing it up to use the sights. So what we're gonna do is, is uh, two exposures, one at about 25 yards, distance and we'll use the ghost ring sights and my experience with the uh, the battle site the uh, two tenths of an inch battle site uh, five and a bit millimeters for those who think in uh, new money um, is that it's it's very good for quick aiming so we'll bring that in and then we'll have at about 15 somewhere between 15 and 10 yards we'll have exactly what we just did two shots on the move and then advance to a uh, bayonet point and uh, this is going to sort of mimic uh, an approach to an enemy position, you know, uh, where the range is great enough that a completely instinctive shoot, like we've just illustrated, may not be the best way to engage the target most effectively because of the distance involved. Mm -hmm. uh, without an extreme amount of practice, uh, using the sights becomes somewhat of a necessity. Mm -hmm. But the closer you get as part of that advance and approach and assault to the position, uh, you come to a point where you don't need to use the sights. And that's what we're sort of trying to illustrate there. And yeah. of course, as the bloke says, one of these holes should be about the size of a number four bayonet.
You shot the string. Oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, using the sights, I mean, it's a ghost ring sight. Before they were called ghost ring sights, it does exactly what it says on the tin. Uh, Help perfectly, first shot, I saw it go straight through as intended. For the eagle eye amongst you, you will have noticed that I finally remembered to step sideways when firing multiple shots, but only at the, uh, at the closer distance. And uh, actually we've got four hits here. So we've got one, uh, what was it? Two, three, four, and some ricochet from somewhere. Well, one of these must be a stone. Maybe, maybe it was three proper hits and one, uh, one ricochet with some nasty stone, uh, which would certainly spoil your day and a bayonet point there. So let's patch them out and let Rob have a go. likes this. So that was a fun effort. Managed to get three hits. One, two, and squeezed one in down here. Of, of course the bayonet right in the face. Eh, where else would you put it? Uh, as with the other practices, I tend to be shooting low on these close quarter applications and that was indicative of the fourth round that missed the target but hit the ground in front. Uh, as we've discussed earlier, still effective in this context, in the, or rather in the context of, uh, of, a, of an actual operation. That the, the, the shrapnel, as it were, were kicked up by that round, would have had, if not a deadly effect, certainly an injurious one, and would have caused this individual to, to put his head down and allow you to close that last little bit of distance. So how's that? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Most that, fun I've had in a long time. That was a fun exercise. And the fact that I'm able to do it with you, that we can learn each other's, uh, learn off each other's uh, mistakes and uh, things we've done right. And that whole exercise from the beginning building is something that I really appreciate. So thanks for coming well, out and doing this. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me and tolerating me. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, um, the late war ex um, technique is much, much better. A much. Absolutely much more instinctive you can shoot faster more accurately on a much smaller target it's it really they were they were on to a good thing there compared to hip shooting yeah um and sort of thinking about it taking it through the hip shooting technique it's really a sort of dynamic bayonet extension it's an extension of bayonet fighting you're in a you're in the bayonet charge position and you're trying to shoot instinctively it's really not very instinctive at all and the effect on target was uh, adequate at best sure that uh something that i found using the hip shooting technique was the the bulk of the mm -hmm. the, the basic pouch full yeah which this one is mine isn't and uh, it, it hampered the ability to get a good grip of the rifle from uh, in this position it was held out from the body a bit yeah and you want to be able to sort of tuck it under your arm yeah and having that pouch in the way it hampered that and that yeah um in terms of the the comfort level of actually using the technique it hampered it greatly yeah. i found that might be possibly why we tended to lose shots left or high and then they seem to go left which is possibly the pouch getting in the way because if you have a shot proper hip shooting from a shotgun you put the stock against your hip bone which if you can't right rifles pointing the wrong direction yeah now on the other hand the later technique uh, and you'll notice we're using the later rifle for the later technique and the earlier rifle for the earlier technique because this one was dominant early war this was dominant late, late war, war yeah. it's an extension of shooting technique and as a result as a shooting technique it's much much more instinctive absolutely much easier to work the bolt quickly follow up shot but what is not instinctive was the sidestepping which we only managed between us to do exactly once, right at the end. And even then it was diagonal. And we've been discussing this uh, in the meantime. And I, we think that, that part of this is you've got the natural impetus to move to either stop and shoot or to go forwards towards, towards um, the target. 
Yeah. That said, though, I would say that uh, a point not in defense of the mm. moving forward after the engagement, but especially in the, what we've been practicing here, which is an advance to a static target that mm -hmm. essentially is a, a man presenting himself yeah. above the parapet of a trench, that the instinct to, to engage and to rush mm -hmm. forward in this context, anyway, yeah. I don't think that that's necessarily the wrong thing to do because in in, in a case of, of an assault on a position, you want to cover that ground and get to the enemy. Mm -hmm. And um, by engaging him, it buys you time to do that, especially at that close range of 10 or 15 yards. Uh, those couple of rounds that go in uh, to the target or in front of the target, as most of mine <laughs> seem to go, uh, it buys you that time to get there. Yeah. Uh, perhaps in the case of a... Uh, non sort of a, like a meeting engagement, if you yeah. will, uh, coming around the corner of a building, uh, coming around the bend of a trail in, in a yeah. wood or something like that, and being presented with a, a full size uh, uh, enemy in front of you in terms mm. of you can see the entire body. Mm. That that sidestepping it will it would probably be more uh, useful, if you yeah. will, uh, because yes, you may be able to successfully engage that first man, but it's not him that you're necessarily worried about in relation to the sidestepping. It's the guy behind him mm -hmm. and engaging the first guy, but getting out of the way and perhaps out of the way of a shot that's coming uh, subsequent by his partner or yeah. his, his, his buddy. Someone else. Somebody else. Then that sidestepping would, I think, come more into play as far as a useful technique. Yeah, but it's something you'd have to teach yourself or be trained and practice a lot because it's not instinctive. No. It's not something that you would think of immediately. But I think it, it, it's, it's definitely uh, got value, as, uh, as Rob, Rob says there. And something else that has value, as we just alluded to, low shots. Yeah. That, despite the fact they're not actually hitting the target, they do provide a similar effect to a round hitting the actual target because of the, the splash that occurs, because mm -hmm. of the round hitting the ground, a face full of gravel, uh, yeah. as you alluded to earlier, it, that is going to have a, a stunning effect. It's going to cause the individual to, to close his eyes, to maybe even duck. Yeah. That, again, will buy you the time to close that distance. Yeah. And to quote a, 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 another, shall we say, famous YouTuber who deals mostly with tanks, uh, the Chieftain, I think is his name, that individual, when you shoot first, is having a um, significant emotional event. And that will cause you, most times, to come out on top. So what's good for tanks? also seems to be mm. good for the infantry. And your lowest shot was only about that much low, and this is a tiny little head and shoulders, to, I mean, it's not even a full head and shoulders, it's a prone rifleman target. Um, so on a full size target that presents itself coming out from, in a, presenting itself in a doorway or something, you're still hitting him in the critical area. If it's a little target it pops out, he's getting a face full of gravel, no one was wearing safety specs, hardly anyone was wearing spectacles at all. <laughs> he's going back down wherever he was Absolutely. before with his hands to his face. You've you've won yep. that that engagement, and there's even some particular targets with uh, from the First World War era with scoring zones, where a shot over the top scores like nothing or one, and then and then the, the splash zone, a score in the uh, hitting the splash zone, yep. gets you points because it is more effective for that very reason. Hitting the ground in front, absolutely. Yeah, but. The biggest takeaway is how much of a good time that was learning the techniques, yep. the historical techniques, uh, both the older and the more contemporary towards the end of the war. And that, yep. to me, that was that was a really good lesson learned. And one last point is that the, the, the ghost ring, the uh, two-tenths of an inch uh, rear sight there, is was way ahead of its time. I mean, when did ghost rings start coming in on shotguns? Not until like the 80s or That's something. That's not my expertise, no, I'm afraid. It's like, this is, this, this is a late 20s, early 30s design. And contrary to what the manuals say, it is actually set for about 100 yards. And people often say, oh, you can't shoot accurately with it. Well, actually that's wrong, you can. You just need to understand that you can. And a lot of shooting is psych psychology. Um, but in any case, a full-size man target at up to 100, um, 100 yards with that, even if you're not centering the front sight perfectly, doesn't matter. Your minute, I mean, minute of man is a real thing. Tar target's big enough. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. I mean, it does exactly what it says on the tin. And close up, looking over the rifle, it's quite instinctive because you're in a shooting stance. You're in a. And as you said earlier, it's a, it's an extension of a shooting technique, yep. not a bayonet technique, which the hip firing seems to be. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Fantastic exercise. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming. Well, thank you very much for having me. <laughs> so I hope that was at least vaguely interesting. Thanks so much for watching. 
Um, please, if you if you haven't already liked and subscribed to Bloke on the Range, please do so. If you ha haven't already liked and subscribed to British Muzzle Loaders, please do so. Rob is on Patreon. I'm on Patreon. Any support is uh, gladly received. Helps us to do crazy things like this and dress in crazy costumes in 30-something degree heat. <laughs> And Mad dogs and Englishmen. Indeed. What does that make me? <laughs> anyway, see you again sometime. Bye. Bye.